Hi, my name is Steve Hoover. I'm the founder of a startup called Redwood EVA. We focus on better design methodology, open source silicon, cloud EDA, and cloud FPGAs. I'm putting this video together for professors who are teaching courses related to digital logic, especially for professors who are preparing for the possibility that fall classes will have to be conducted remotely. Many of the technologies we've been working on and work with, while already quite valuable in the classroom, are suddenly urgently needed. <clears throat> I'll provide a quick demonstration of these technologies, which are available online and are either free or open source. I'll first give a quick demo of makerchip.com. Makerchip provides free online access to our commercial EDA tools for open source and educational use. After Makerchip, I'll discuss how cloud FPGAs can be utilized to provide students with a lab-like experience without a physical lab and without having to send FPGA boards through the mail. This is Makerchip. It provides your students with everything they need to write their code, simulate, and debug. And what's particularly valuable about Makerchip is that it supports the emerging transaction level Verilog or TL Verilog language standard. TL Verilog is a huge and long overdue leap forward for circuit design methodology and it has very significant implications for the classroom. I'll explain this as I walk through some quick examples. Typically an intro to digital logic class is mostly a whiteboard class using Makerchip and TL Verilog. Students can be hands-on from day one. Let's code a simple logic gate. I'll start with an inverter. So output signal equals <clears throat> not the input signal. I'll compile and simulate this. We get a logic diagram, a rather degenerate one in this case, and simulation produces a waveform. And we see that the output is indeed the inverse of the input. So where did the stimulus come from? Well, the tools recognized that the input was dangling and it warned us about this. We can see that in the log as well as here. This is the tool's interpretation of the model and it shows a warning on the input, but the platform simulates anyway with random inputs. So your students aren't held back by test bench development. After combinational logic, you can introduce sequential logic. I like to use Fibonacci sequence as a first example. The sequence starts with two ones. We'll initialize these ones during reset. So during reset, value is one. And after that, it's the sum of the previous value and the previous previous value. You can have students start with explicit flip-flops if you like, but this expression implies two flip-flops as you can see in the logic diagram. And we can see in the waveform, the Fibonacci sequence. After sequential logic, you can introduce pipelined logic. There are tutorials and examples available this one is a simple pipeline calculation of Pythagoras' theorem over three cycles. You can see the code is very simple and cleanly reflects the pipeline structure. This question mark notation conveys when the computation is valid, and this helps to highlight the pipeline nature of the design, as you can see here in the waveform. I'm going quickly, but you can see how Makerchip and TL Verilog speed up the learning process for students. There is no software to install, no platform issues to worry about, no test bench to code, and none of the legacy baggage of Verilog. You don't have to worry about blocking versus non-blocking assignments, reg versus wire versus logic versus bit, packed versus unpacked, generate statements, always blocks, etc. Like pipelines, the other constructs in TL Verilog, like state and trans uh, transactions, are exactly the concepts you need to teach. So students learn the language, <clears throat> and in doing so, they learn logic design. Generally, when I teach to students with little or no background in digital logic, they are coding pipelines within the first hour. To illustrate the contrast, our TL Verilog source code is in the lower left. Corresponding Verilog is in the two panels on the right, where the pipeline nature of the logic uh, is not as clear. Now, a real world example, 
and this will show how to make use of cloud FPGAs. This logic contains 16 engines doing computations for generating fractals. It's used by fractalvalley.net, or soon will be in any case, to accelerate the generation of these fractals. Here we're seeing fractals generated on the server using C++. Fractals are very compute intensive, and you can see a little lag for large images. In this window, we're running with the FPGA using the logic we just saw in MakerChip. You can see that the fractals are generated several times faster, uh, giving a much better user experience. This FPGA kernel uses only about 5% of the available resources on a single FPGA. In this application, the connection between the web application and the FPGA kernel is provided by an open source framework that we developed in collaboration with Politecnico de Milano. It's called First Class. Class here stands for Custom Logic as a Service. And you can see how the web application streams bits via a WebSocket into the FPGA kernel. Uh, the great components here are provided uh, by the framework and the deployment is automated. Your students can develop FPGA kernels like this one with MakerChip or otherwise. The kernel uses a very simple interface that you can see here to stream bits in and out. And first class automates the process of deploying their logic to the F1 cloud FPGAs. Currently, your students will need Linux machines for deployment, and they can use AWS machines for this if they do not have their own Linux machines. Uh, depending how much time you'd like your students to spend on the physical implementation of their designs, the AWS F1 platform provides the full suite of Xilinx tools for optimizing the physical implementation through logic synthesis and place and route. As far as the front end that will communicate with these kernels, the simplest approach for your students is to utilize a generic front end that's provided with first class where the students can just specify uh, the data that they want to send and see the data that comes back from the kernel. With some preparation, you could provide front ends customized for their assignments. And as the program evolves, collaborations with CS web development classes are an excellent opportunity to really do something impactful and exciting for the students. I do hope this video was helpful to you. I look forward to seeing these technologies make their way into schools, and I look forward to seeing universities use these technologies to drive forward with new models of computing enabled by these cloud FPGAs and by Redwood EDA tools. I greatly enjoy working with academia, and I hope you'll reach out to discuss your needs and to brainstorm with me about opportunities for collaboration. Please be well in these difficult times. I hope we can find a silver lining together. All the best.